Here are two more examples of mathematical induction, one with inequalities and one with uh, the Fibonacci sequence. Here's the first one. We were looking at n factorial, and the idea is to get an idea of roughly how big it is. If you even play with factorials even a tiny bit, you start to realize they grow really fast when n equals even, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, it's getting up pretty big. Um, and, but then the question is how fast? Well, let's try and compare it to something we know grows fast, sort of a standard example, 2 to the n. Well, the claim is that it's actually bigger. If you do some numerical investigation, it's pretty easy to, to see that. But I claim it's less than n to the n. So it's sandwiched in between there. Now, that's not quite true right at the start. For example, 2 to the 1 is 2, and 1 factorial is 1. So this is ahead at that point. But if we get past uh, up to 4 or more, then it's going to work. Okay. So here's the base case. And that's n equals 4 here, because we're not trying to show it for 1, 2, and 3. Okay. And we just look and calculate it. 2 to the 4th, is that less than 4 factorial? Yeah, 24. And that's definitely less than 4 to the 4th, which is 256. OK. Yes. OK. So now assume this is true. And this is where a lot of people would use a different letter. But I just say, let's just assume that's true for some n, not any particular fixed n, but for some arbitrary n. And we want to show that 2 to the n plus 1 is less than n plus 1 factorial and less than um, n plus 1 to the n plus 1. OK. So here's where it makes a lot of sense. We're going to see here why it makes a lot of sense to try to prove this inductively n factorial is defined recursively. n plus 1 factorial is all the product of all the numbers from n plus 1 down to 1. But what's another way to say that? It's just n plus 1 times n factorial. And it's that recursive nature that's going to help us do this. OK, so let's just, we've got two inequalities that we want to show. We don't want to do them all at once. OK, so the first inequality, there we go. OK. so. Let's say, let's just look at n plus 1 factorial. That's really the, the interesting object that we're trying to analyze. And let's express it in terms of the previous case. That's the whole deal. This induction works if there's some natural relationship between the next case and the previous case. And this is what I was saying. n plus 1 factorial is the product of n plus 1 and all of the other guys, all those other numbers from n down to 1, or in other words, n, n factorial. That's a recursive characterization of the factorial function. OK, so that's. Um, now I can just replace that. Hey, I know n factorial is greater than 2 to the n. So I know that this is greater n factorial times 2 to the n. This is where it gets a little weird if you're not used to you working with inequalities. I'm not saying that n factorial is 2 to the n. I'm just saying that n factorial is greater than 2 to the n. If I multiply both sides of that inequality by n plus 1, I just get that this is bigger than this. And that's something we can always do. Sometimes you have to be careful if this is negative, but nothing's negative here. It doesn't switch the order. OK. And then what do I know? Oh, n is bigger than or equal to 4. And so this is going to be bigger than or equal to 5 times 2 to the n. Well, that's certainly bigger than 2 times 2 to the n, which is 2 to the n plus 1. So if you get stuck here, what we could have done is gone back, gone to 2 to the n plus 1 and say, OK, let's look at a recursive characterization of 2 to the n plus 1. How does that relate to 2 to the n? Oh, yeah, by rules of exponents, 2 to the n plus 1 is 2 times 2 to the n. And here we're looking at 5 times 2 to the n. And that's big, definitely bigger. So notice we used the, the induction hypothesis that this inequality, and we multiply both sides by a number. That's a very common thing with working with inequalities. And then we also. Uh, looked at the nature of 2 to the n plus 1, and we realized that 5 times something is bigger than 2 times something. Okay. So, um, so that shows that this is true for all <coughs> n by math induction. Okay. Now, what about the second one? Okay. So I'm just going to take n plus 1 factorial again. Oh, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do that again. 
Okay. And now again, I can take this guy, n factorial less than n to the n, and so that's going to be less than n plus one times n to the n. Okay. So I just took n factorial less than n to the n and multiplied both sides by n plus one, and I get that inequality. Okay. Now what about n plus one to the n plus one? Hmm. Let's let's actually work at both sides. Let's see. We'll start at the other side. And we'll say, hmm, how can I expand that? How can I relate that to n to the n and things like that? Oh, well, you know what? Rules of exponents again. That's real crucial. That's n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1, just to the 1 power. Hmm, OK. Well, n plus 1 is bigger than n. So that's going to be bigger than n to the n times n plus 1. So again, the wonderful thing about inequalities is you can replace stuff with stuff that's different. It's not like working with equalities, as long as you know which way it goes. n plus 1 is definitely bigger than n. So if I take n plus 1 to the nth power, it's definitely bigger than n to the nth power. OK, so now I can just chain that together now. Okay, This, this n plus 1 times n to the n, is definitely less than this. But that was equal to this, and I'm good. So. A little harder often than working with equalities because we're not used to it as much, but we still got it. Okay, so now we've proved the n plus 1 version. So the second inequality is true by mathematical induction. Okay, so now let's turn to another thing where recursive and inductive ideas are really crucial. Let fn be the nth Fibonacci number. Okay, remember the Fibonacci numbers are made by the next Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two. And that is a recursive definition, and that means that proving things by induction is typically going to be a good way to prove these guys. Now, there's lots of cool identities for Fibonacci. There's lots of good ways to prove them. But induction is a kind of a low-tech way to prove them. So here's one of the cool things. If you add up the squares of the first n Fibonacci numbers, there's a cool shortcut for that. It's actually fn, that last Fibonacci number you used, times the next one. And there are literally hundreds of, of cool identities for Fibonacci numbers. OK, so let's do this. Base case, uh, n equals 1. So here there's no, there's no gap. There's no uh, delay in starting. It's supposed to be true for n equals 1 as well. n equals 1. Well, f sub 1 squared is 1 squared. Is that equal to f sub n, f sub n plus 1? That's 1 times 1. Yes. OK. So we're going to assume that this is true. Oops. We're going to try and copy it better for some arbitrary n. And to show, we'd like to show that this is true. Now with the summation, remember, you're replacing n with n plus 1, but as an additional term. The sum is supposed to go longer. And so it ends up adding in the next guy, fn plus 1 squared. But here it's not a summation. I'm just going to promote the n plus 1, n, n, plus, n to an n plus 1, and the n plus 1 to an n plus 2. So I'm just subbing in n for n plus 1 in a summation, which makes the summation bigger, and in here in an ordinary formula, which just makes the n's turn into n plus 1's. OK, so I don't know that. I don't want to use, oops, I don't want to use um, both sides of it or anything. but. I can start with the left-hand side and see what I can get. So we're just going to start with the left-hand side. OK. Oh, first of all, before I get into this, I should have put in here. OK. Crucial knowledge is we want the algebraic version of um, the Fibonacci rule. Well, there's a few ways to write it. Well, like Fn plus 1, the next Fibonacci number, is the one right before it plus the one before that one. So the previous two, you have to go back to n or n minus 1. Okay. There's a few different ways to write that. I could say, well, what if I want the nth Fibonacci number? The one before that is fn minus 1, and the one before that is fn minus 2. That's a nice way to write it as well. Well, what if I don't like subtracting? What if I want I add f sub n plus 1 and f sub n? That's two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. The sum of those guys is going to be f sub n plus 2. All these are equivalent. They're just relabeling stuff. Okay? And, but any way you slice it, it's 
we need an algebraic version of the statement. You add two Fibonacci numbers to get the next one. Let's see which one we end up using. Okay. So here's what we want to analyze. Okay. So we can package all that up because we know that that's equal to this. And then remember, it doesn't package up the last little bit. That's what's new. Okay, and let me just say the all-important by the induction hypothesis. I don't think I was real careful about that in the previous example. The reason we can do this and package up a huge amount of complexity and make it simpler is we're assuming the induction hypothesis at the level of this sum. Okay, so what is that equal to? Hey, look, there's a common factor of fn plus 1. It's the same strategy we were seeing before of, oh, not control F of factoring out stuff and also kind of looking at what we want to do. Hey, we want something that has an fn plus 1 in it and there's fn plus 1. Hey, look! Check it out. It's exactly this version. This is exactly fn plus 1 times fn plus 2. It's really kind of amazing how easy some of these proofs are. Not all Fibonacci you know, proofs are easy, you know, by induction or whatever, but it's actually something where you just start writing it down, you follow the template, and it's kind of, it's almost handed to you. There's just one little algebra step here and there you're done okay wow that was shockingly easy so the uh, statement is true for all positive integers n by mathematical induction because we took the n case and we showed the n plus one case the dominoes all fall and we're done